what up guys it's your boy nickel i know it's been a long time since i've posted a video it's been about two years anyways i'm back with some ram maintenance so with that being said i want to kind of show y'all what i'm doing uh i'm not in the city no more i'm in the country now but uh i kind of just wanted to show y'all what parts i've bought and what all is going to be involved and tomorrow i'll try to shoot a video of actually doing what i'm doing okay if that makes any sense all right so on these hp 70s 85s and 90s they're pretty much all the same from the cars to the trucks it's just going to be how to remove the trans pan on these so as many of you know or may or may not know on these transmissions they're made by zf so it's more of a german type transmission and with them and mopar's great or i guess delantis now that i think about it their great wisdom has decided to make this transmission pan plastic and you cannot reuse the plastic pan and change out just the filter so you can't do it all the way you can do it now is you have to buy another pan with the filter included already built into the pan for $335 so that's just to me ridiculous for one why am I going to pay for another pan that I can't change the filter out in instead of having to drop so much money on a pan so what I've done is Pacific Engineering or PPE for short has come out with this pan specifically for the trucks I don't know if it's for the cars but I would assume it would bolt up the same. Don't hold me to that, though. Uh, this is for Ram 1500 Hemi 3.6 Eco Diesel. Anything in that general nature. Uh, this is going to cover all the way up to 21, 22. Uh, but here's the pan. Uh, this is their black and slash I don't, I, raw aluminum. They also have a raw casting. And then they also have just a straight black. Uh, and the nice thing I like about this pan is it's got this nice big drain plug. It uses one of those neoprene magnets, I think. It's really strong. So it's able to catch more metal and material. Uh, anyways, here's the part number that they engrave into it. It's uh, PPE 228530. And PPE's filter, which I'm not for sure if it's their filter or just a generic one they use off the shelf. It's going to be PPE 228058600. And that's their uh, filter. It looks like a big, nice, high-quality filter. Let me open it up. Uh, of course, this guy looks like two, four mounting bolts. Nice. Uh, construction looks like it's all billet aluminum uh, once again like I said the filter is removable so you literally just buy this pan once and that's all you need it reuses the factory gasket you can either re use the one on your stock trans right now or you can buy a new one I'm gonna see if I can reuse my stock one uh, my truck's got about 52,000 miles on it right now According to Mopar and their infinite wisdom in the owner's manual, they said that this is a lifetime fluid, which I don't believe in. That's just more jumbo gumbo to get you out past warranty. Now, if you actually go to ZF and you contact ZF, they'll tell you that this transmission, preferably, they would want you to maintenance it every 40,000 miles. Granted, if I'm going to go up by ZF standards, I'm over by 12,000 miles. But, you know... And this America we live in now, things are expensive. So I couldn't afford it then. Another thing I'm going to be doing is, is I already have the Banks iDash set up in my truck currently. So I went ahead and bought the Banks. Uh, I have the iDash in their module where you can add different stuff to view. I went ahead and bought the uh, temperature fluid kit for this. Uh, here's the Banks part number if you're interested six six five five nine it's just a little temp sender and it's made by banks it comes with you know the connector and the sensor itself uh this port here is a one quarter mpt or npt i'm sorry 
and you just thread it in there and you can use Teflon or whatever. I'm out of Teflon, so I just use some high temp RTV. It's going to sit and cure overnight, so I should be straight. Uh, also, because of where the trans is located at, the bank's harness is not going to be long enough. So I got an extension harness, part number 6130L29, I believe is what it is, if I read that right. So that's how that's going. Now, another thing I'm going to be doing, since I'm doing all this at once, this is a kit from RevMax. I lost the packaging to it, but uh, pretty much what this is going to do is it's going to eliminate the factory warmer on this uh, transmission. It's also going to eliminate the uh, restriction uh, doodad in there when it gets up to temp to open up and cool the transmission. Now, they do that for emissions and for whatever else to get better miles per gallon. I would rather would have my transmission covered better as far as temperature and get it lower. So in this kit is going to come with a block off plate that you're going there and replace the thermostat. That's what it is. You replace the thermostat with theirs as an open design. This is also the warmer backing plate. This is what you're going to install with RTV to block off that warmer uh, part of it. But you don't. Ha Here's the thing on this one. This kit too is nice because you have you can do it either either way you want. You can install just the the warming plate and leave the thermostat part alone. You can do it that way, or you can do it the other way. You can install the thermostat and have the oil cooler full and flowing all the time like they did back in the day, and not install the warming uh, the block off plate. They say that typically, with if you install just the bypass, you'll get about a 10 to 15 degree drop. But they said if you install both of them, your trans temp will run around 160, 165, depending on your climb in an area. So, and my thing is allowing me to install this as long as well as I install it, I'll be able to flush out the transmission cooler and the cooler lines. That is a big thing because on these transmissions, I think the thermostat opens up around 180, 185, something like that. Uh, and, you know, it depends on how long and how much flow is going through there. So if I go ahead and eliminate that, I can just flush my trans like normal and have lower temps and a better, longer transmission in theory. So uh, here's the installation guide for the PPE pan. I'll pull it out. You get some stickles, which you know stickers add horsepower. And then here is the instructions. This is everything. They're telling you their legal agreement and all that other crap. Pretty much same thing. Now for some reason. Um, I read some people saying that they're having some issues getting these installed. I don't know. But now they've updated their instructions. They're telling you to remove the transmission cross member. You can support that with a jack stand or if you're on the ground and just put it somewhere close to the tail housing. If you've got two-wheel drive or if you're four-wheel drive, put it somewhere by the transfer case. Something. Obviously, be smart with it. Don't put it on the dry shaft or anything. Just... Put it somewhere that's nice and sturdy. It's not going to fall and kill you. Uh, obviously, remove the pan. Like here, it says you can reuse the stock gasket. And obviously, you want to clean the, the mounting services real well. It also gives you the torque sequence for this pan, uh, per their instructions. Uh, you know, obviously, follow that to the T if you really need to. Also, the final torque on these pan bolts that they supply... Or not supply but for this kit is eight to ten foot pounds so just make sure you get that and then you'll want to reinstall that cross member I'm not for sure exactly on what the torque spec is on the cross member I'm just gonna go with German engineering and uh, say it's good and tight and then uh, you of course you'll check the fluid and add fluid to it as needed 
according to their instructions. Now these trucks don't have a dipstick, so there is a procedure on the side of the transmission where the dipstick is or where it used to go. Uh, and I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, I'll read up on that tonight. And when I try to do an install video, I'll pull it up and try to show it to y'all. So on the side of the trans, you'll drain it. Matt, let me go ahead and show y'all where the location of all this stuff is. And then uh, I'll show you the fluid I'm gonna use. Okay, as you can see, it is a plastic pan. Uh, that's my skid guard, or skid blade I got from, I believe it was Mythgard. I think it was Mythgard something, starts like that. And uh, like that, and that's how I got it. You just remove these torques, and then that will uh, drop the pan. Uh, you'll drop it from the rear. On the stock pan, I am not seeing a drain plug, but I might be wrong. Uh, let's see. No, I don't see a drain plug. Uh, uh, okay, there is a drain plug. It's right there. Let's see if I can get y'all in there. Uh, don't get sick. There it is okay but yeah there it is and that's how you'll do that and then on the other side of this uh truck is the transmission cooler and the whole warming assembly is on this side i'm going to scoot over there and get y'all over there i'm gonna pause it so y'all don't get sick hold on okay guys uh this right here is the warming plate this thing right here shit that's hot but uh it's right here uh it's gonna have two uh, radiator hoses or heater hoses i'd assume that come from up top they're gonna connect up top up there that's gonna be four mounting bolts that hold this on uh so make sure you undo that you're gonna have if you've got four-wheel drive your drive shaft's gonna be in the way for your front axle, so undo the four bolts up front and get rid of it. Well, not get rid of it, but move it out of the way. And then uh, undo the four, like I said, the four bolts around here and drop it down and uh, get that situated. And once you do this, then you can do the pan. Uh, like I said, that'll be up to y'all. I'm not trying to make this too long. I'm just trying to make sure that I explain it thoroughly uh, to y'all so y'all can make sure that y'all don't make any mistakes and I don't make any mistakes either. Uh, so with that being said, it should be the end of the detail uh, portion of it. Let me go back up top and show you what uh, brand or you know what kind of fluid I'm gonna use. One more sec. Alright guys, so here's the fluid I'm going to be using. It is the Amsoil Signature Series ATF. It's the blue. I don't know. It's the low viscosity transmission fluid. Uh, I got five gallons. Uh, I'm also going to be flushing my transmission at the same time uh, while I'm doing this. Also, the PPE pan adds about a gallon, not a gallon, adds about a quarter to, to the total capacity. So, but here's everything you need to know about it. If you want, you can go on their website and get everything situated. Like I said, tomorrow I will try to do a video. I don't think I'm gonna do this on the ground, on gravel out here. I think I'm gonna try to go to the base and get in a hobby shop and see if they'll help me. So with that being said, I hope y'all have a blessed one and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.